Hello guys, welcome back to another video in this React series. This is a continuation of my previous video on React API connection with Axios. If you have not watched that, please feel free to go back and watch that video. I have provided the link for that video in the description as well. In this video, we will enhance the API data and update the UI part with drop down option. In the previous video, you have seen we have fetched this data from an API and displayed in our application. So here we are going to add a drop down option and dynamically add this fetched data which we can see it here in that drop down and then once user selects any option from this drop down we will show that one on the page or application here. So that's the target here so let's open the code editor for that one. This is a code which we have added earlier to fetch the data using axios. As I said, we are going to display the option which is selected by the user. So let's create one state by using use state hook here. I will name that one as select user and a function by name set selected user. So this will store our current value or option which is selected by the user here. Then to set the current state which is being selected by the user, add a code within this useFX axios get method. So this will also set the initial value whenever the page or application loads and the first item which is shown in the drop down that will be set to this selected user and which will be displayed on our application. And the next step is we need to define a function. Here I am naming it as handle user change. So this is a arrow function which will take event object as its parameter. This function will be called on each user selection from the drop down. And within this, this line of code extracts the value of user selection from the event object and store it in the selected user ID. Then this line of code searches through an array by named user data to find an object with an ID property that matches the selector user ID. So and finally that will be saved in selected. And the final thing in this arrow function is set selected user. So whatever the value is selected by the user that will be set to our state which we have defined earlier. Once that is done, our final part is we need to update the JSX element. In earlier example, we have added the data fetch in list items instead of that one. As we are going to use a drop down option here, let's convert this piece of code to drop down. So here you can see I have added select which is nothing but the JSX element which is used for drop down option and whatever the user details we are getting that will be shown or displayed in the applications drop down by using this option JSX element. So as we are iterating by using this map so all the names will be shown in this drop down here. Once this is done, the final JSX element which we need to add here is we need to display the user selection for that one. I have added a piece of code here. This is a conditional rendering construct in JSX. It's checking whether the selected user variable exists and is to the which means it should not be a null or undefined. If there is a value in the selected user, the data which is pertaining to that particular selection made by the user that will be shown here. As you can observe here, I have added two paragraphs. So in the first paragraph, we are going to display name of the selected user from the drop down option. And then we are going to show the email ID. So once we are done with these steps, we are now ready to preview this one. So save this file and go back to browser to preview it. Now you can observe data is fetched from the URL and that is displayed in the drop down. And as this is the first element on this React application load, name of that first option and email of that one is being displayed here. As soon user selects a different option from this drop down, that value gets displayed in this application. So this is another simple but yet very useful feature in React.js. So based on your requirement, you can enhance this one and use it in your application. So that's it guys for this short video. If you have any questions, please put it in the video comments. Thanks for watching this. If you like this, please click on like button, share it with others and subscribe to my channel.